Craig Kelly left his AFLW players in no doubt as to where they stood in the Collingwood pecking order when Kelly Underwood questioned him on Friday night. What on earth is happening with the women's competition at the moment? It feels like it's plateaued. Are you happy with the 10 games? Oh, Kel, you've gone down a rabbit hole. I'm not sure you wanted to go down. Let's not compare the women's game to the men's game. The fun that our girls have, every training, the music and all the stuff that happens is amazing. The focus is there, but we've got to come on the journey. We can't just squeeze the lemon and just start handing out cash that we haven't got as a whole competition. Now, Craig Kelly is a mover and a shaker, a long-time AFL business partner who doesn't believe in the men's and women's collective CBA and who incidentally played a key role in the appointment of Nicole Livingston to the top AFLW job at head office. But on Friday night, he protested too much. In the face of genuine big-picture questioning about AFLW's strategy, he was boorish and, frankly, condescending. It bordered on a rant. And frankly, to cry poor on a night when Collingwood was trumpeting its greatness, record membership and massive attendances was just unbelievable. But even worse was Kelly's response to the elephant in the Magpies room. The decision to terminate its netball team with little notice, which threatened to derail the entire netball competition. I would just say what's first, chicken or the egg? It's the going... Invest. So cricket invested? Soccer's invested and it feels like AFL hasn't come to the party yet. You don't reckon we're invested? I've just blown up the lives. We have just blown up the lives of these amazing athletes and the coaches and all the people. Oh, there was tears everywhere, me included. I'm going, hated it. So Collingwood sacked its netballers to save its footballers. That's a new one. Up until now, all the club has done is point the finger at the national netball competition, having taken a lot of public money to get them in in the first place. But still... The AFLW players are still there and they've got their music and their fun and their elevated choral marketing campaign. Nice one, Craig. Don't know where to take that. Look, we all have bad nights and we all have bad days. Lord knows I've had them. But that was a night Craig Kelly would take back. Well, the night got worse from that, that point too, didn't it, guys? Because of the uh, results on, on the field. Did, did Carlton show the rest of the competition where to pull Collingwood apart? Well, the only thing, I, I obviously, that when you bring pressure like that, which Carlton did, you're going to win most games. But I think, for me, Collingwood have won so many close ones, you can overlook things and you can get excited. But I think it's not a bad thing for them that they could believe that they can just win from anywhere. That's what everyone feels with Collingwood. Well, it didn't happen on the weekend. I think that if you win by two points, you overlook some things. You lose by two things, mm. two points, you go hard at what you did wrong. Collingwood have probably overlooked so many things for so long with how they get out of jail. I think this loss, they might look back on and say it wasn't the worst. Might thing. sharpen them yeah. up. And there's a couple of players that will, will scrutinise in losses, and one of those is arguably the best player in the league, which is ha who's had an amazing year. So I reckon he had three or four efforts that he'd love to take back, Nick Dacos. And this has been harsh, but it's the reality for it. Got to be stronger over that ball. If you're going to play in the midfield, not across half-back in big games, there was three or four ground balls efforts and defensive efforts that he would like to have over again. And we know he'll review this, because I think he had similar in the Brisbane game earlier on in the year. He spoke about doing hundreds of ground balls on the back of that, so he'll work hard. But that's a little chink in the armour that opposition clubs will now look at and go, oh, hang on, is he not going to be strong over the ball? And whether or not they can exploit that will be uh, highlighted. Craig McRae threw Jeremy Howe forward late uh, for three goals in the final quarter. Does he put pressure on the Mason Cox selection as a result? Yeah, I don't see um, why they continue with Mason Cox. I think he, he gets far too much leeway and probably gets games that other players in the Collingwood side wouldn't. So his last five or six weeks, he's hardly influenced the scoreboard. They like him structurally, I suppose, Lordo, and to help out in the ruck. But I think they've got better options in perhaps how, although I'd keep him behind the ball, Ash Johnson or, or Frampton, I'd probably look to bring in. Do you agree with that? Uh, no, I, I'd love to see it this week against Hawthorne because uh, his challenge will be, he was a surprise on the weekend, so Carlton weren't preparing for it. His challenge will be, can he kick four or five when they can plan for him? But I think their forward line's been a bit underwhelming mm. uh, in terms of Mason Cox, Meyer checks just going OK. Mm. So I think with Murphy and Moore being able to handle the forwards of Hawthorne, I'd love to see them give Howe a full game there, just to be ready for finals if it needs to be pulled that trigger again. And what about Carlton, who have completely turned this season around with these honest conversations? And you've talked about the, the club backing the coach and the difference that made. The comments from Jacob Wiedering on Friday night were fascinating, I thought. 
And there's some tough, um, some tough days and a lots of really tough conversations. Um, you know, it was tough conversations from the leaders to the players. Um, there were some tough conversations amongst us as coaches. You know, and there clearly there was a lot of com tough conversations between coaches and players and the leadership group. Bossy, he, he certainly led the way with those conversations. I mean, some of them were tough. I didn't like some of them, but they were true. And, you know, you've, you've got to praise his leadership and the way he's gone about it. Awesome, absolutely awesome that they stuck together as a club and were able to turn things around. The old Carlton would blow the joint up and they've done the right thing by sticking fat as a group. And I wanted to show this from Weedering. He was like, I know he had issues earlier in the year with things off field, but the pressure is so good down the field that they're long bombs coming in now and he's getting back to the best he can be because no longer is he under siege he can intercept the ball because the pressure is so strong further afield. It takes some real courage to change in season it does. doesn't it Lotto? It does yeah. it does and I think that um, you know to be honest and sometimes it didn't click straight away for them I think they went and had a, a get together at the Kernos place and they didn't win the first mm. game but it's all clicked since then due through to effort and content.